Yo, we live in difficult times. There's war, political unrest, the pandemic, poverty, families being torn, communities ripped by gun violence and people dying every day. Police, injustice, it's all bringing so much pain. But y'all, we can look inside our minds and we can understand who we are, become better, and do this thing like we've never done it before. But it all starts with our mental health and I know we can do it. I believe in you because I believe in me and I believe in us. Hello, my name is Gerald McGee, clinical social worker and therapist for Everyday People Individual and Family Counseling Center. We are celebrating 10 years of Everyday People Counseling and we're so excited. We're here in the Shore Cultural Center, the big red building in the middle. And in this episode, we are going to be talking about stress. Are you ever really stressed out? Are you? If you said no, you're lying because we all get stressed out. So we're going to be doing some talking about that. But before I get too far off into that, I want to recognize and say thank you to everyone that's helped us to get where we are at this point. And when I think about it, it's, it's got to be like over, man, 35, 40,000 hours of therapy, working with people, talking about children, talking about individuals, talking about couples, couples. Man, that's some really whew, stuff right there. That be stressing me out. I have to hold those back just a little bit because that takes a lot of work. But anyway, we're going to be talking about stress today. But before we get too deep off into that, let us start with our attitude of gratitude. So our attitude of gratitude today is to be a giver. You know, when you feel good, you feel like your life is okay. You can feel at peace doing for others. I'm not saying that you just do for others and do for others and don't take care of yourself, but nah, you can do it because you feel positive and you feel like you don't have to do it out of fear of some type of punishment or looking like you some bad person, but just giving and being okay with doing it. And if you can't give also being okay with that because a true giver will give when they have and it's okay when they don't have to give. So have an attitude of giving and be okay with who you are. Today, I want to talk about stress. You know, for me, honestly, when I started my agency as a therapist, I realized that when people came to me in my office and they were talking about their problems and I was doing the assessment piece, that there were so many factors that influenced their decision to come in my office and sit down on my couch and let's have this discussion. When I started this show, hmm, I wanted to send out a message to everyone I could about the things that impact our lives and that the idea of mental health, the idea of therapy was, was, a very important component to us being healthy, well-rounded people. If you remember in my first session, I might have said thinking, feeling, and experiencing well-being because I realized that we all experience stress. So in my introduction, you watch the video or you hear the sound, you see the pictures of war, you see the pictures of political unrest, you see the pictures of poverty, you see the pictures of conflict and confusion and people having pain. Well, all of these things are a part of who we are and we live in a world and we live in a time where there's so much pressure. And so with that being said, let me define stress because stress and pressure go together. You know, I think of stress, I think of that tension, that feeling we feel 
tension, pressure, fear around getting things done or being worried about things that will happen in our lives. Hmm. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Having that fear about what could happen in our lives. So when we hear of a war, that's scary because there's death and there's destruction in war. When we think about poverty, <clears throat> that's a real hard thing to have to, to live with. Now, don't get it twisted because not all people that are poor are unhappy because that won't be that's far from the truth because, man, I've been to some places in this world where people didn't have a whole lot, but they were happy. The perception that of being poor is really based on one's own environment and, ex and experience because some people could be pretty okay and have their basic needs met, but still feel like they're really struggling. Others, as I said the other day, may live in a bucket with a, a raincoat, a umbrella, and feel pretty happy with life. So I don't want to just label poverty as being a reason for stress, but it can be a reason for stress. But even the perception of being in poverty can also be a serious stressor. The pandemic, man, has that not been a stressor for everyone? Everybody's been stressed out about that. And if you haven't been stressed out about that, maybe you live in a bubble. But I tell you where I come from, there's been a whole lot of stress. Think about all the lives that have been lost. Have you had to wear a mask or change your life, the way you work, how you did things because of the pandemic? And sometimes it got so stressful that you just wanted to be like, man, bump it. I just don't want to do this. I just don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm so fatigued with worrying about the regulations and expectations around the pandemic. It has changed our lives for the last three years. And it's still going on. Our bills. You know, I remember the song, I got bills, I got to pay. <laughs> and I work, work, work every day. Y'all ever heard that song before? Yeah, but bills, they're always there. They're always coming, right? But you got the, the, the mortgage, your rent, car notes. You got stuff you're trying to save and, and you're trying to, you know, have things for retirement. You, you, your kids need things. And it seems like no matter how much you work, no, how, no matter how much money you make, there's always something else to do. This causes stress. And not to mention the educational goals, where you're trying to go. Yeah, we start very early with our kids with that, don't we? Telling them, hmm, what are you going to do? You need to go to school. You need to make really good grades. Because if you don't make really good grades, then your life is probably not going to be that greater quality. So we put all this pressure on our kids to go to school and perform really well in the education system. And many of our children get very, very stressed out about that. And we focus on all these test scores and, and all this stuff, which I, I understand is important, but it can really make life pretty stressed for our young people. Of course, our health, right? Got to be concerned about that. We need to take care of that. And that comes with some level of stress, but to be too stressed about it is probably counterproductive because we will stress ourselves out to such degree that it will actually influence negative health. Man, we can go on with this. Social status. Teenagers want to be cool, want to be a part, want to be connected. Early adulthood, yeah, I found my place, I found my niche. Look at me roll, look at me do what I'm doing, and if I haven't done that, oh, I'm stressed out as I don't know what because it seems like it's not working out for me and I'm not doing the things I wanna do, And but I feel like I wanna be in this space. So I just get more and more stressed out by my circumstance, about my situation, and not to mention the environment. A lot of people stressed out about that, hearing what was going on, global warming. You know, I have a number of clients now who come to me just because they have anxiety around the environment.
because they are they are worried that in a few years life and the world around them will be so different change of course talk about the pandemic bills death somebody dying losing a significant other loss of a relationship and of course we go to trauma and how when we are traumatized it influences us, us to be stressed out about so many things we are triggered to be stressed out about all things around us look i've come to the conclusion that no matter how young we are no matter how old we are no matter how rich we are or how poor we are we will experience stress it's a real thing that we all have to deal with because without it we would die yeah yeah we would die if we didn't have stress because stress is like hmm the pressure that is created in order to move water through pipes it is necessary for things to happen we wouldn't get anything done if we didn't feel any level of stress so when we think about stress there's good things excuse me that may stress us out and then there's bad things that might stress us out but the way it affects our body is the same so a good stressor might be hmm i think a really good one is when you get or buy a new home has anybody ever been through that process that is stressful as i don't know what all the information you got to give them feel like they want to be all in your life, all in your mix. They want to know everything about everything. And it's like, man, do I got to tell them all of this? It feels like I have to give them everything. And then you still don't know until you know. That's a very stressful process. You know what? When I bought a home a, a few years ago, I found myself to be stressed out. I was actually having eczema and and acid reflux and all this stuff just going through that process i knew i was stressed out about getting this home many times i had to tell myself it's gonna be okay it's gonna be all right it's not that serious but those are good things moving to a new place it might be something you want to do but it might create stress some bad stressors of course being in an abusive relationship emotionally abusive physically abusive sexually abusive yeah doing that stuff every day feeling this chronic stress someone living in conditions where they don't have adequate food shelter or clothing could be very stressful even someone who has a lot of money but they're always in fear of not having it anymore so they never get the rest or never feel like they can be content that form of stress can be very bad. I'll imagine that I had some seeds in my hand and I was out here trying to grow some grass. And you like might say, what does this have to do with stress? Well, it's the process. You see, in order to grow grass, you have to first get the right soil. And if you don't have the right soil, it's not going to grow. So you have to lay the right foundation. So much of what we do in life is about laying foundation so we can get another thing done. So we lay the foundation. Then we have to select the seeds. Like we have to go get educated. We have to choose a career. We have to make plans for our future. So we have to get educated about the right seeds for our particular environment. We go out, we get some seeds, but we can't just get seeds because we got to consider mm, what environment are we trying to do this in? So that's another stressor. Hmm. There's birds, there's water and rain, there's wind. So, oh, we'll get some hay or something to put on top to try to protect our seeds so they could grow. So, boom, that's the second accomplishment. So we're happy about that, right? But then it creates another stressor. Now we got to get out there and we got to water it, water it, and water it. So many of us spend so much time watering our life, watering, because we want to see things grow. We want to move forward in life. So we constantly watering, 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 day and night. Got me working day and night, like Michael Jackson said a long time ago. Man, he's still a beast all these years later. But you know, that's another story, another discussion. 
But anyway, so I'm trying to put this grass down. I'm, I'm trying to put, put this water down, and I'm trying to make sure my, my head is on top so, so my grass will grow. And then when I see the grass growing, like when I got that job or I got that house, so now, now I see my grass growing. I'm excited about that. Yes, I'm, yes. But guess what? I still got to keep watering it. Got to keep watering it. And at some point, it'll be growing enough, in enough, that I can take the hay off of, uh, take the hay off of it. But then, oh, I got to put something else down to help it grow some more. See, no matter where we get in life, there's always something else we got to do to be okay or to, to, to keep moving forward. And, we, and, and we're thinking like that. So we're, we're constantly in this process. So here I go. I, I've put my, I put my soil down. I've put my, my seeds down. I've put my hay down. I've been watering, watering, watering. I've seen some growth. Now I can move it. Now I got to put some more stuff down to make sure it grows properly. Oh, and I got to get those weeds out too. Now that might take some work and diligence, but it seems like every time I get something, it requires something else. Isn't that crazy? Every time I get something, it requires something else. So now I'm wired up in this process of trying to get more because my circumstance has created an environment where I need to have more. Or perhaps, just maybe, my environment has created a circumstance where I feel like or it's opened my eyes up to these other approaches and things I could do to make my now situation even better. And so now I'm pushed. I'm pushed. It's not about just having the grass. Now I got to make sure my grass is the thickest ever. So I got to go out and get this. I got to go out and get that. It's not about just having a nice home. So now I got to go out and get this, or I got to go get this car, or I, I got to have this over here, or I got to have these shoes. So it, it's, it's not about that. Oh, it's not about how much money I make. It's what I can do once I make that money and where I can go next. So then it keeps me in this cycle of stress. So now my grass is growing. I'm watering it. And now I have to start cutting it. Mm. Cutting, 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 cutting. So I go, I cut, I cut. I still have to water. I'm excited to have the grass now, but the grass still tends to make me have to work. And see, one of the reasons why we are so stressed out because... Like with the grass, we had to have the right soil. That was one stage. The second stage was to get the right seeds. That was the second. The third was to get, get the hay to protect our seeds, our investment. That was the next thing. Then once we had it, we had to take care of it. We had to maintain it. Like once I got that house, once I got that car, I had to do everything I had to do to maintain it. Once I became wealthy, I had to do those things I had to do to maintain it. And in that process, I still have a continuation of stress. You know, maybe sometimes we should stop worrying about the color of our grass and how much it's grown. Maybe we should stop worrying about all the things that we have and realize the most important thing in life is our physical and mental health. And it is not about things. It's not so much about accomplishments, which all those things make life a little bit nicer. But sometimes we put too much emphasis on those things and we can't be so happy remember i told you earlier sometimes when people are poor and they don't have a whole lot i've met quite a few people that are really really happy and what i find with those individuals is oftentimes they're not worried about things they don't have as much as in other places they are really more worried about those things you, you, and, and, and thus, it creates more problems. Look, when we experience stress too much, it produces this chemical in our body called cortisol. And cortisol is the stress hormone. And when we experience it too much, it causes us to have physical and mental health challenges. It increases our likelihood to develop cardiovascular disease, strokes, heart attacks, but it also motivates us towards things like anxiety and depression and other mental health conditions. So perhaps we need to step back a, a minute and remember my last few sessions with Naisha Perry. Remember, we need to self-care. 
take time for yourself. It don't cost nothing to stretch. It don't cost nothing to take a walk in the park. Does it really? It doesn't cost nothing to take some time to yourself. Maybe draw, maybe write, maybe do things that make you feel good to re-energize yourself taking that walk or going, doing that, that run. I know that really works for me. Doing things. Realize, realize that you don't have to always be focused on everything, but set your priorities. Maybe you got 10 things that you concerned about, but pick three of those things and really focus on them and let the other ones go until you get those three things done. Now, I know if you're a mom and you got children or you're a family, you got children, you know, that might be hard to do sometimes, but I'm going to emphasize this. If you got a lot of things to do, accept that, but know this, if you don't ever give yourself an opportunity to de-stress your ability long-term to maintain your game and the things you're driven towards will become more difficult. And perhaps, which I don't want to go here, but I will, the indication that you're doing too much will be a strong, powerful situation that takes you down physically or mentally where then you have to stop and then you'll see things around you go on. So set priorities, take care of things that are important. Some things you can move to the back and do them later. Let other things go. Don't try to do everything because you can't. Remember, I always say, learn what you can control, but more importantly, when you learn what you control, learn what you can be really good at and master that because there's a lot of things you will never be able to control because it's out of your hands. So that, and in closing, I will say, set boundaries with other people so that you, will give yourself an opportunity to be in a good place. But in, and let me emphasize this. It's okay sometimes to let your grass get a little brown. It's okay sometimes to not put a little fertilizer on it. We don't have to be constantly caught up in the game because what we find is people are more stressed out in not third world countries. They're more stressed out in first world countries. Yeah, we, we tend to worry about things a whole lot more. So we have to stop, take a breath, realize it's okay just to be in our own skin and de-stress. Thank you. In our next episode, we'll be discussing emotions. Oh, those emotions. Yeah, we've been talking about stress. So we need to understand a little bit more about emotion. I will see you in the next episode.